welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show where we are going to be doing a trout episode. And we're here at Diva Springs near Andover in Hampshire and they're going to be trying to catch some trout on the crane fly which is also known as the daddy long legs. Now it's a fly that's really a sort of traditional one for September, maybe early October when it's when it's cooling off. It's a late summer, yeah, autumn's on the way, the leaves really aren't yet coming off the trees but it's sort of got that I like a muggy, a muggy dampness about about the feel of the day, and of course this brings these daddy long legs out, brings the crane flies out, and when they end up on the water, of course they find themselves into the mouth of the trout, and all fish indeed will take them, including carp. Anyway, we're going to give it a go here at Diva, but first let me show you a little bit about the daddy long legs or the crane fly. Okay, for the daddy long legs, you can see here they've got, well, they've got six huge legs, two at the front, two at the side, and then they've got these two trailing ones at the back. So they're fairly distinctive, and when they're resting, as they are on this wall at the moment, uh, basically you'll see them, the wings are flat, they can lay out very, very flat, and very large wings. Now you think they'd be good at flying, but you know that creates some sort of resistance in any form of breeze, so they don't like it when it's windy. Now when it's windy, they do get blown onto the water. They basically, well, there's loads of different species of, uh, of crane flies around all over the world. Something over, I think it's 4,200 different species of crane flies. And a lot of them do actually, you know, hatch out in the water, but a majority are in grass along the edge, the damp areas. They lay, lay their eggs along the edges of the margins of lakes and rivers. Not so much rivers, more on lakes, really. Now, traditionally, this is years ago, the body of this of this fly, as you can see, it's quite a long, long body to it, and it's very, very delicate. The actual wings and the legs, but I think this is part and parcel of what makes it so attractive for the trout. The body, when they used to make them for fly dressing years ago, would be made of a piece of old bicycle tubing, and over the top of that, they put some ribbed brown silk, which is trying to give the bandings of the body. Now you can see the artificial daddy long legs, as in the pattern constructed by fly tyre Sid Knight. The next is a muddler headed pattern for fishing across the surface and the head of this pattern is actually made from tightly clipped deer hair which also makes it buoyant. And note the bright green body tag as I feel this is an important factor that can retain the trout's attention. And thirdly, the most deadly pattern fly I have ever used, the pearly daddy with a gold tungsten bead head that enables you to get the fly down deeper, which is where, well, generally where, the bigger trout will be cruising. When this pattern is fished back in tweaks, it makes those long legs pulsate, and that's the switch that makes the trout move to it. Each of those long trailing legs has miniature knots tied into the fibers to make it look just like authentic leg joints. There are loads of different species of this type of fly and their larvae have often been known to cause damage to Britain's leading cricket pitches. Well, way back then, it damaged one to such an extent that the entire cricket season proved highly productive for any bowlers using spin. But it was Diva's rainbow trout that I wanted to put in a spin and as soon as I started that tweaking, with the standard wet fly pattern, I could see the fish were responding to it. They just can't resist those quivering legs. The best part about fishing clear spring water lakes is that you can see the response the trout has to a particular pattern. There's no point flogging a dead horse if the trout don't look or turn at a fly, then simply change it. You'll soon be able to see which patterns make them well more aggressive and I don't even mind if they don't take a chase or a follow is all I'm looking for because they might still want that fly but it could be fished at a different speed maybe they want that pattern faster or maybe they want it slower and while stalking the margins I came across a spot all the other anglers had walked past this overhanging willow tree meant you had to cast at its fringe from either side. To the casting angler, it looks totally unfishable, but to a totally awesome 
trout spotter like me, it meant that here was a very big trout that had probably never even been cast to for several days. All I could do was poke the rod through the branches and just wind all the fly line onto the reel. That left just a short section of leader. Wham! He raced into the margins and grabbed it. Came on! Have you ever tried to play a double figure trout with one hand and film with the other? It's not easy. the time I was trying to side strain that fish on a short line to prevent it snagging the line in those branches. Eventually I took a gamble and managed to get out from under the tree and into an open area. When you hook a really big trout do be aware of those sudden lunges. Always give them line. And remember, there's little stretch in fly line material. The only stretch is in that short 10 feet of nylon leader. Choose your moment when you want to net the fish. Calm catches fish, panic breaks them off. And listen, if the hook hole pulls free, don't worry, there's nothing you could have done about it anyway. And when I did finally manage to get this rainbow trout in the net, it proved to be a classic diva trout with deep belly and wide back. Hmm, not bad for my first fish, so it's off to the weighing scales to see what it went. Well, I'll tell you what, there's a bit of luck, guys. There's the fly. It is the unweighted Daddy Long Legs. Got very, very lucky around the corner there. Everybody else is fishing away there. Took me about two hours to set the filming up. And that's the unweighted version. And if anything, fishing that very, very slow. I guess I was about two feet down. Let me just show you the legs there. You might be able to just see the legs are still. And because they're knotted, they're very, very strong. And they're made with a secret fibre. Everybody thinks it's peacock hole, it's not. Sid Knight ties it with this secret fibre there. So there we go, let's just take a look at this fish. It is, I fear, a gargantuan double. Just look at that. That is what you call a proper trout. Well, a proper trout's a wild brown trout from a river in England, or Scotland, or Wales, or a sea trout, or a salmon. All of which this is probably bigger than. So there you go. A monster trout. I'm going to get it up to the scales because I fear it is in double figures. I'm going to put it in excess of 12 pounds. It might even go 13 pounds. What a result. Let's get it on the scales. Right, people. The moment of truth. That is oh, every bit, every bit of 12 to 13, I hope. I hope it's a double anyway. Moment of truth, here we go. On the totally awesome scales, let's get it in the middle. I'd say if that's not 12 pound, I will eat my lunch probably. Now then, I'll put that on straight.
I mean, somewhere over 14 pounds. The scales are a bit sticky. They stick between 14 and 15. It wouldn't surprise me if he's close to 15 pounds, that fish. What a beauty. Oh, well, look at the scales, guys. Judge for yourself. Diva Springs, the place to come for big trout. I think that one's worth a still. Right, people, we just had the scales checked and uh, Stuart put them back together. The bolt, bolt was missing off the bottom and actually came in at 15 pounds eight. So that's a really, really good fish. Had a bit of lunch, I'm off again, but this time, having caught on the standard one, I'm going to be using the pearly day with the gold head bead on, which will get it down, that will get it sinking and also gets all these legs twitching as well and I can almost suspend this one vertically and if I can tweak it on a vertical plane pretty sure I'll get another trout but probably won't be as big as that last one that was a chunk let's go a good time to find static trout is lunchtime so I set off with Pete, Cap and Polaroids to see what I could find. When looking for trout, always try to keep the sun on your back to reduce surface glare, or use the shadow line of other bushes and trees to watch them moving. Remember, it's usually harder to see a static trout in a weed bed than one that's cruising out in open water. And yes, there's a trout right under my feet, with peck fins quivering as I tremble the fly up and down to pulse those fly legs. Wham, I get him on, single handed, the camera held in one hand, the fly rod in the other. Now, I bet you've never seen another fishing presenter do that single handed, have you? Well, let's face it, the totally awesome fishing show doesn't even have competitors, we're right out there on our own. And my luxury expense account means a lot of the films I actually make all on my own. One-handed hookups. <laughs> I love it. Now some anglers swear by fluorocarbon leaders for all clear water trouting. But to be honest, I've never found a need for it. I just use a length of straight mono nothing tapered and do you know what i really don't like fluorocarbon i find it's not as limp as standard monofilament now that's another trout on the pearly daddy now all i had to do was try that muddler pattern For muddler headed crane flies, a long cast actually does give you more of a chance as you are covering a greater area. And in clear water, the trout will spot that movement on the surface from several feet away. But fish that cast right in towards the bank and make sure you look behind the fly to see if anything is coming. Often they follow from some distance before grabbing it. Well, I've stripped and stripped and tweaked and yanked this uh, surface one with the muddler head with daddy long legs and I'm not getting any taste it's still off it's gone really flat it's gone really unseasonably warm and normally I would go to a tiny small fast sinking nymph so I'm afraid I'm not going to get a take on this at all you need a good ripple for this but having said that there's a big chunk laying just down here in the weeds there's no way he's coming up on this uh, muddler headed daddy long legs so I'm going to change back to the pearly daddy and I might just finish off with one more fish and that's four fish. Well, can you want more? I think I'll make the change now. Changing flies. Keep your favourite patterns close to hand. On your waistcoat fly holder is best. Then you can change flies at short notice and get straight back out there. I generally don't move off from a fishy area before trying at least three different patterns just to see if I can get a response. And that can range from a dry fly on the top to a nymph fish just under the surface 
or a heavily weighted nymph in the deeper zone. Search out that water. And don't forget to degrease your leader every few casts to break through the surface film. I just use washing up liquid. Guys, here's the situation. I'm looking for this one final last fish. It's late in the afternoon, the sun is going down there by reflecting more rays of light than are penetrating the water, so I can't see through it. So, well, that increase in sunshine, even though it's late autumn, has popped all the scum and weed up. So, all the other anglers that do long casting are catching nothing. They're gone except for one guy over there. He's flogging away, you can obviously see the fish, but they're in there. Now, if you can pocket cast and lower your fly or cast between one of these clumps of weed, Get it down and fish it on the vertical plane just like this, about three or four inches up and down. I'll tell you what, good chance you're going to get nailed. And because it's been rested, obviously with the weed, coming to the surface people can't cast normally, but for ordinary stalking guys, it makes no difference, just a bit of a pain really. But those fish will slow down, relax, and they'll stay stationary in one, one place. And if you can discern the head from the tail, lower a fly just in front of the head, man, I've got a feeling we're going to get bit moving along all the time looking for fish trying to spot them in pockets i can see them it's tangle time but it's, it's really really honestly worth a go doing this really worth a go especially late in the day you to get them in those spots other guys don't get into and all that eye straining through the weed finally paid off. I found a trout hiding in a gap in the weed that just loved that pearly daddy fly. I just use an old metal rim fly. It's direct drive, which means the handles revolve. That's what's called a knuckle wrapper. I don't mind. To add drag pressure, I can just palm the rim of the spool. But remember to do pocket casting properly, you need a degreased leader and heavily weighted fly like the pearly daddy. Your fly can have a tungsten head or you can use less fly dressing and run copper wire down the shank of the hook for added weight. Or even try some fuse wire, but get that fly down fast. And if you catch a limit of trout, why not ask at the office about trading them in for some smoke trout? Lots of fisheries now offer this facility where you can offload some of your catch and still leave with packaged smoke trout. Now that's sure to keep the wife happy. And you don't even have to get messed up cleaning the fish. Well, you can see that I've had two fish then on the pearly daddy, the weighted one with the uh, tungsten bee head that's got down deeper. I knew that one would catch us absolutely deadliest fly I've ever used. There you go guys, that is another Diva Springs. Not a double, but a really good chunk. That's part of six pounds, I think I'm holding it now, it's getting bigger by the minute. I love that fly, I love it. So never give up, even though in late afternoon that weed scum can make surface fishing difficult. You might not be able to make long casts, 
but going round doing some totally awesome trout spotting will get you the chance you need to put that fly right in the trout's face. The fish feel safer with less anglers on the bank, so when other anglers leave, that's a time I step it up a gear. So there's the fly, you've seen it, it's a daddy long legs or the crane fly. Get out there, give it a go, come down here at Diva Springs, you've seen it in action, you've seen fish to 15 pounds eight, and what a good job. Stuart, check those scales for me, because I was calling it about 14.4, but that's what it was, 15.8, he assures me. I gave him the check afterwards. Thank you, Stuart. Beautiful evening, fantastic, most un-English like autumn. I've had some great sport. I shall return with the crane fly next year. Why don't you give it a go? This is a totally awesome fishing show. Signing off until the next time.